So when buying a computer or any IT system, whether it be software or hardware, there are certain things that you need to pay attention to. Now, I'm going to quickly go over what they are and then go into more detail about why those things are important. So first, we have user experience and needs. Next, we have specifications, compatibility and connectivity. Cost. Next, we have efficiency and productivity. Beyond that, we have implementation. And finally, we have security. So let me go back and explain. So first and foremost, we have user experience. So what is that quite simply? I've put a description here on screen. Feel free to Google it yourself and find out and find a definition that works best for you. But I would say it's simply how the user obviously experiences that thing. What are the thoughts and feelings that the user has when using said system? Is it positive? Is it negative? For example, I have an Android phone. I really like Android. I think iOS is a bit limiting for me. However, I know people that could never come to Android because Android's user experience for them is so tightly linked to their MacBooks, for example, that using anything else just doesn't make sense. So user experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the company, IT, ser its services and its products. So was your interaction with that product positive or negative? For me, interacting with an iPhone and an iMac was very negative for me. So I've stayed away from those things. Next, we have the needs or so user needs. Again, I'm going to try and stick to my phone as the example. So I needed a phone that could be used for sat nav. I needed a phone that had a headphone jack. No new iPhones have a headphone jack. My Motorola phone does have a headphone jack. I needed a phone that could do up to 4K video at 60 frames per second. Some iPhones can do that. I needed a phone where the battery would last me easily two days. No iPhone that I've tested can do that. I needed a phone with a really, really good camera. Most iPhones have that. I needed a phone with a memory card slot because even though my phone comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, I can add using a memory card slot or a memory card one terabyte, so 1,000 gigabytes of storage. No iPhone has that. To get an iPhone with 1,000 gigabytes or 500 gigabytes worth of storage, I would have to spend a crazy amount of money. So users need, so every user has things that they need. So there's no point in you, for example, buying a laptop that doesn't have a USB port. Some MacBooks have USB ports and some don't. You might be better off going for the one that has a normal USB port because not everything has moved over to USB type C as of yet. So your user's needs are also very important. So specification comes after user needs and is very closely linked to user needs, right? So remember I said earlier I needed a phone that could last two days on a battery life, right? Well, my battery has to have a very specific number. And that number for me was um, 5,000 milliamps per hour, meaning my battery would last roughly a day and a half to two days, right? I needed a very good camera. Now, what does that mean? I needed a camera that could do 4K video at 60 frames per second or do 6K video, right? Now, cameras have to have a specific resolution for the phones to be able to do that. And they also have to have a specific type of processor for the phone to be able to do that, okay? So in my case, my, my processor is the Snapdragon 870. My camera, um, I believe it's a 64 megapixel camera, so on and so forth, okay? So specification is linked to user needs. So the user tells you what they want and their specification would specify exactly what is needed to make that thing happen. So exactly what was needed in my phone to make it last for two days. Exactly what was needed in my phone to make it able to do 4K video at 60 frames per second. So you specify the using specifications what is necessary to achieve the end goal. All right. So when buying any system, specification is very, very important. It's probably one of the most important factors. Now, when we say compatibility, is something compatible. That simply means, does it work with something else that's maybe already there? I, For my phone, I already had a 128 gigabyte memory card from a previous phone. So my phone had to be compatible with a memory card, number one, and it also had to be compatible with a memory card I already had. I didn't want to have to buy a new memory card. I didn't want to have to uh, buy a different phone. So they had to work together, right? So compatibility, how well two or more systems integrate and work together so 
for this phone I have now, I simply took my memory card from my other phone with all my pictures, videos, everything. Put it into this phone and everything showed up. Just just, just as if you, you were to plug um, a memory stick into a new laptop, everything would just show up, all the files and folders you had. More or less the same thing. So compatibility is important. Now, moving away from hardware, if you think about software, Windows 11 was released at the end of 2021, right? Compatibility is very important to Microsoft. So it would be nonsensical for someone to have Windows 10, have every single thing working, upgrade to Windows 11, and then nothing works. So Microsoft had to ensure that people upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11 had some layer of compatibility. The programs, the apps, the pictures, the videos, everything or most things that they used to use on Windows 7, 8, 10 should also work on Windows 11. So that's where compatibility comes in. Next, we have connectivity. Now, when we think about connectivity, we think about Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. We can also look at stuff like physical connections, like USB. Now, for my phone again, I'm using my phone as the example again, I have USB-C. So that's the reversible USB port that I can plug in either way. I can plug my phone into an HDMI, plug it into my TV. I can plug a memory stick in. I can plug a mouse and keyboard in. I can. I, I actually have a USB dock for my phone that I can plug into my my TV. Plug a. I use a wireless mouse and keyboard on the actual phone and turn my phone into an actual PC, where I can open multiple apps at the same time. They all open on screen at the same time. So connectivity for me was very important and simply it's in the word connectivity how does it connect does it connect well does it have all the connectivity or the connection ports necessary i needed usb-c because i know the versatility of usb-c someone with an iphone might say i need lightning port but very soon in in a couple of years i believe apple has to also move over to usb-c so when you look at connectivity all your previous devices that are specifically created for um, lightning might not be compatible with USB-C. So the connection methods that you're using might have to change. So when buying any system, connectivity is important. Now, I think the example I had on screen earlier was um, choosing a computer, for example, right? There would be absolutely no point in buying a PC, a computer in this day and age that either doesn't have Wi-Fi, so that's wireless fidelity, or has Ethernet. Because these are the two main ways that us in this day and age, we connect to a network and then to the internet. So if you are buying a PC, a phone, a tablet, a smart TV that does not have that already built in, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot. So connectivity, very important. That's how we connect to networks and connect devices to our device. For myself, when buying something, cost is one of the main factors I have to factor in, right? I'm not a millionaire, so I have to shop sensibly. Now, I'm going to mention cost per gigabyte because this is something you guys should be aware of by now. When we spoke about SSDs versus hard drives before, cost per gigabyte is something that came up. So SSDs tend to be more expensive based on the amount of storage you want. And obviously hard drives are a bit cheaper. So if I wanted to get a one terabyte hard drive, it would 100% be cheaper than buying a one terabyte SSD. Even though I can get an SSD for £50, I can get a hard drive for £50, the cost per gigabyte is going to be different. The same can be said here. Now, my phone again, it was released in July 2021. Brand new phone, big screen, fast processor, all the good things that you want in a phone, right? Now, this phone, I got it brand new for £350 outright. Now, let's look at something like the iPhone that was released last year. The cheapest iPhone you could get was, at, if, if I'm not mistaken, six to seven hundred pounds, so almost double the price, right? Now, cost is important for system for IT systems as well. Imagine you're a small company, you're trying to upgrade your systems because you have had this PC for the last 10, 15 years. Someone comes along and says, I can give you an Apple Mac computer that costs two thousand pounds, for example, two thousand seven hundred pounds. Or I can give you a Dell laptop, which is the one I have. For £1,000, they both have exactly the same spec inside, exactly the same hardware, different software, right? Cost might be a factor. If you're somebody who knows for a fact that you work much, much faster on a Mac PC, the cost might make sense. 
Because if you then have to go and learn how to use Windows, that might be counterproductive, right? But if you're someone like me, when I was buying my laptop, I had the option of buying a MacBook, which was 2,700, or buying my Dell laptop, which was 1,000 pounds. Both had exactly the same spec, both exactly the same um, processors, RAM, storage, everything was the same. I opted for the Dell one because even though MacBooks are being praised for how good they are, the cost for me outweighed the benefits. Now, last, we have efficiency and productivity, right? When something is efficient, it works as it should when it needs to. If something or someone is productive, they're doing the work they're supposed to be doing. So very closely linked. But I'm going to try and explain giving the examples again um, I have. So I'm going to use my laptop in this case, right? The laptop I have was released in 2018 and it has a graphics card. And the graphics card it has is the GTX 1050 Ti. Now, the new laptop I would like to get has what's known as a new graphics card called the RTX 3070. Now, the RTX 3070 is a lot more efficient. It uses more power, yes. It's, it's louder, yes. It gets hotter, yes. However, it is roughly 234% faster at games, for example. I do a lot of video editing, right? So for me, I need a laptop that can actually handle that very well. Normally, when I'm exporting a video after it's been edited, I have to leave my laptop there for 20 minutes, not being able to do anything. This is not very efficient or productive of me, right? Because in that 20 minutes, I could have started working on another video. I could have started typing up a document, but my laptop gets so hot and so slow that I actually just leave it and I don't touch it. I let it finish its work. So... When buying a system, you need to look at the efficiency based on what you already have and the productivity, whether improvement or decrease based on what you had. So for me, it wouldn't make sense for me to buy a laptop that's actually less efficient or less productive than the one I have now. It only makes sense for me to go up. So if I just give a few numbers here, so the games, the frames per second average increase in the laptops would be 234%. So let's say I were to play GTA 5 on my laptop now, I would get 44 frames per second. On the new laptop, I would get 132 frames per second. And again, all this means the frames per second simply means um, this is how many images are being displayed in a second to make it seem as if there's a video moving on screen. So 40, where was I? 44 frames per second versus 132 frames per second. So already we have a 200% increase. Um, if I look at another game I play, I don't play any of those, but hopefully that explains quite well why efficiency and productivity are important. It does more work in a shorter time span, so you can just get more done overall.